Hello, everybody. What's going on? Welcome back to the conversation series. I am blessed to have a very special guest here with me today. If you are on the travel side of any Instagram, TikTok, any of it, you will know this very special guest. I have Melissa here with us today, also known as Miss Rover. She is an incredible traveler. Um, and she is here with us today. I'm going to turn it over to her and let her introduce herself. Hello. Thanks so much for having me. This is great. Sure. Um, gosh, introducing myself. I always struggle with this, <laughs> but I'm Melissa. I grew up in the Midwest in Michigan in a very small town of like 700 people, like one stoplight, yeah. elementary, middle school, high school all combined. It was, yeah, not... I don't travel was never like something I thought was possible growing up there. So yep. it's, I think that's part of why I'm so passionate about it now, but yep. <laughs> I was yep. able to start my journey with travel as a traveling occupational therapist, taking nice. on contracts and that's how I ended up in Washington and then Alaska and now California. Very cool. Very cool. And just so everybody is like, your first time on an airplane was like when you were 21 years old and you went to yes. San like is that true like 21 years old was the first time you're ever on an airplane yeah and that changed my life I, like going to San Francisco I was just like like in the movies just wide-eyed like young yeah. just like whoa an H&M whoa <laughs> like the city <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. I'm uh I, I I always am so amazed at um, hearing people's stories of when they first started to travel and then now have created these travel businesses and just gone full in on it. So when I was re researching you, I was like, she didn't get on a plane until she was 21. And now she's doing all these incredible, I was like stunned. I was like, what in the world? Um, but I, it was super cool just to kind of read that about you. I wanted okay. to do a lightning round with you and just kind of do some um, fast questions about some of your travel experience and just some of the things you've gotten to encounter. Um, the first thing that pops to your mind kind of when I say these things. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Solo travel or travel with friends? Ooh, I've tried both. I prefer traveling with friends. Okay. Van life or cabin life? Oh, don't make me choose. <laughs> <laughs> like pick I mean, it's seasonal for me, like van life majority of the time, but in the winter, I I can't help but pick cabin life. Okay. Okay. Favorite pastime when you're traveling in the van? Mm. Podcasts, I think. Okay. Yeah, definitely. What is your favorite thing about van life? Oh, there's so many favorite things. First thing that comes to mind I mean, I think just being outside more for like sunrise, sunset, like really feeling the entirety of a day. Okay, very cool. Favorite scenery to look out at when you are working? Mountains, if I can. Okay. Photo or video? Ooh. <laughs> I'm going to choose... <laughs> I'll, I'll choose photo because film okay. photography is something I really love. Very cool. If you could go back to one national park right this second, which one would you go to? One national park. Um, North Cascades. Okay. In Washington. Yeah. Cool. Big city or outskirts? I think now after going through a pandemic, I'm going to say outskirts, but it used to be big city for sure. <laughs> I think everybody has like dispersed from the big city. Yeah. yeah. Like give me a small little remote cottage. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think that's where everybody's going to begin with anyways. Yes. Desert camping or mountain camping? Oh boy. Um, these are hard. <laughs> I think, oh gosh, I I'm going to go with mountain. Okay. Okay. Uh, glamping or tree houses? <laughs> treehouse uh, that's uh, that's what I was hoping you would say because I'm like <laughs> so in like into these treehouses right now I, I yes. 
so hard not to love them. Work hard or play hard? <sighs> Trying to find a balance between those, but I mean, play is always more fun. <laughs> okay. Play is always more fun, but it, it's fun <laughs> when you get to do your job at the same time and in just such an easy way. But I hear you on the balance part. I couldn't yes. have been more there. Um, I want to hop right in. Where did Miss Rover come from? Where did that name come, like start? I wish I had a clever story about how it started, but honestly, <laughs> I was just like doing some basic like marketing research essentially. And cool. you know, my name, Melissa Miller, is just so common. I, yeah. I couldn't use my name. I couldn't use like everything was taking taken. There's like you know, Melissa wandering, Melissa wrote, yeah. like all of those oh, things yeah. are already done a thousand times over. So I basically went to a thesaurus and typed in like travel, different travel words until Rover came up. I was like, oh, I haven't seen that one yet. <laughs> hey, I like it. I like it. And now because you've created a full blown business on this where you're doing this full time now, how did you really brand yourself as Miss Rover? How did that come to be? Um, it was always a part-time hobby for me. And I don't really feel like my branding was very consistent at first. It was kind of just like, oh, I have this blog and it's yeah. cute. Um, but then brands started reaching out and I started to take it more seriously and then, I mean, honestly, during the pandemic, I was kind of put in a situation where my travel contract was up with traveling occupational therapy. Oh, okay. And it was either move or yeah. try freelance. And I had just started dating someone. So I chose freelance. <laughs> got it. Got it. First time on an airplane was that you, when you were 21. What is your kind of why for starting Miss Rover? Yeah, uh, for me, I mean not getting on a plane until I was 21 and growing up in such a small town, I felt like travel was this, this like luxury unattainable thing that I couldn't, you know, achieve. And yeah. so I think my why really stemmed from finding travel that was affordable and being able to share that with others and inspiring people to go out and do it too. Very cool. I, I've always, um, I've traveled since I was the age of four. And so I've, I've learned so many things when I've traveled, but as I've gotten older, I've really had an appreciation for the people that have actually sat down and kind of outlined things for people just in terms of like, okay, here's your, but like, here's how you can actually travel in your budget and make it so realistic like, how did you come about like, hey, I want to make sure that everybody is able to travel and see these things as well, no matter how much money that they have? I think it started with, I mean, friends and family from Michigan when they would see like where I would end up. They were like, oh, I could never do that. Like, that's like, I'm just going to live through you. And I'm like, no, but you can. <laughs> like, And then I would stumble across tools like free campsites.net and, you know, different, you know, finding used or secondhand gear that really made it possible for me. And I just wanted to share it. It was like, yeah. oh, look at these great resources everyone should know about. Very cool. Very cool. Now, if anybody, like, if you guys are a follower of Melissa, your website is beautiful. All of your videos are kind of like, you have truly like romanticized kind of your platform and just everything that you get to go do. When you're building this, because I'm speaking from experience here, I finally had to bring someone in to completely redo my website because I was like, I could tap out. I can't do it. I, I physically do not have the skills to do this. Was there, ever, <laughs> was there ever a moment that you were like, okay, I can't do this. I need to like, how do you approach that and be like, I need help from a creative standpoint? I think for me, the push was definitely going full time with this and just being spread so thin, you know, I was trying to, you know, post on Instagram every day, post yeah. on Twitter, post on TikTok, uh, yeah. make a newsletter, like do all these things. And I was like, I can't, yeah. I can't do this. Um, yeah. And also just, you know, recognizing that I needed to save some mental energy for creativity to really allow and continue 
any kind of authenticity in my work. Yeah. Yep. So that really, yeah. Was it is like, it is like the hardest balance to try to figure out. And especially with this, I have a full-time job outside of this. So I say mm -hmm. like this stuff comes outside of my uh, full-time job hours. Um, but it, I can't even, as you were just saying that I like, you got to post on Instagram, you got to post on Twitter, like all of these things, all of that stuff adds up and it is the totally. hardest, hardest balance game ever. Yes. I, think, <laughs> yes. I think even from your perspective, doing this full time, you still have other things that you are doing, like on top of traveling, on top of doing all of these other things, you have to still be in the community just fully interacting so I uh that hit home for me I was like yep that is I gotta as soon as I'm done talking to you I gotta go and do blah 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 blah, blah. <laughs> oh so, I know it's hard working for yourself it's just it's like it never ends it is it's incredibly hard when you were just you hit on it in the beginning when companies started approaching you for collaborations and still do it today how do you approach those from a creative standpoint Luckily now, since I'm a little more established, um, if companies are reaching out to me, they're pretty familiar with like my work and my style. So there's not too much like, um, I guess, creative yeah. back and forth with them. They kind of just trust. I mean, there's yeah. guidelines, of course, but <laughs> I mean, and for me, I just, I just try not to repeat anything, which is really hard, yeah. but it's like, oh, let me switch up like my outfit style or like yeah. the the angles or the trail or like I just try to keep some elements that are different with each brand okay now that we're we're in the new year we're in 2022 um how like what does this year kind of look like so far for you how often are you traveling right now my partner Jonathan did the math <laughs> of course he did on like how much time we actually spend on the road yeah. so last year was 35 percent of the of the year okay and I imagine with if it wasn't a pandemic it'd be closer to like 50 55 yeah. Yeah. if it was up to me it'd probably be a lot more but <laughs> um it's kind of great because my partner is a cinematographer and so I can yeah. we can come back when we're in the community we're working yeah. with local people local companies um, and I get to assist him with that what is when you started this because I've heard just when I've talked to people who are going full van life or who are doing this kind of travel full in what is one thing <laughs> or just something <laughs> you would have known about before you went and completely did this full time Oh my gosh, I have like 20 things. <laughs> um, if I had to choose one, I think the ultimate challenge for me on the road is self-care. Okay. I definitely thought like, oh, van life, like slowing down, like, you know, more time, but yeah. just making tea, making coffee, you have to like yeah. get the, the stove out, get the propane, like it's just you there's not there's as much so time as you think yeah yeah which is great and kind of like meditative but um yeah definitely like making time and balancing time spent driving yeah. with taking care of very interesting because it, 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 everybody kind of shows van life as this super soothing experience and most of the time you're not seeing like oh, the van broke down or, oh, my, right. something has happened with the van that has happened. <laughs> so you, most of the time when people are getting into this, they're like, well, we didn't know about this. <laughs> everybody's like, well, that's because this happens all the time. And everybody's looking around like, okay, well, we didn't see this part because everybody's showing all the good stuff. It's not, all, sure. it's, it's not the challenges. What is one thing you haven't done or one place you haven't gone that you are dying to go to? Oh, there are so many. Um, <laughs> with the van, I'll, I'll break this into a couple sections. Okay, have at <laughs> with it. With the van, the van, I really want to go to Mexico. I've okay. never been to Mexico. Okay. Um, also, I want to go back to Alaska. But okay. anyway, <laughs> internationally, <laughs> um, New Zealand's always been a place I've just oh. like romanticized so much, just yes. the mountains the ocean, the cliff, yeah. like everything about it. I want to go. Yeah. So bad. 
I I will double click on that because I am I am dying to go to New Zealand and Australia and everybody that I've talked to is like yeah we'd love to go to except for the 20 something hour flight that we'd have to be on to get there and I'm like I don't care I'll go yeah I'll do it I will do the 20 totally. <laughs> sign me up yes exactly would you ever consider setting up and doing like a group trip with people I have thought about it I actually even went through the process of doing that but you know it was yeah. at the height of the pandemic and so yeah. I didn't have any success and then was kind of like oh maybe I just don't have the personality and it was kind of like yeah. Meh. but I'm open to it and I would love to do that sometime because I feel like especially in the last couple of years really lost out on like connecting and yes. spontaneity just all of the things so that'd be it's nice. It's definitely, I, I would love to do it. I would be super excited to do a, a group trip with you. Um, when traveling, whether it be travel conditions, living situations, weather, when have you felt the most challenged? Hmm. For me, um, I, I think it's been, <laughs> I'm getting older. I'm, I'm 30 <laughs> now, <laughs> but um. I can't do those like those trips anymore with other content creators where it's just go, 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 sunrise, sunset, sunrise, sunset. Like yeah. you're in a new place constantly. The sun goes down, you're traveling to the next place. Like yeah. I get so burned out and it just feels so, I just feel so disconnected to a place. Like I look at a picture that I, that we took there and I'm like, I don't even remember being there. Like, <laughs> you Absolutely. know, it's just like. It's, it feels so like consumerism to me. And so I'm trying to really step away from that. And that was part of getting the van. Yeah. Very cool. Feel slow down. Yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> I am 24, about to be 25. And I've gotten to the point in trips where I'm like, okay, if I want to go sit down by the water, I'm going to go sit down by the water. You guys can do whatever you want to, but I'm going to sit here and chill and listen to music and yes. fully take it in or like I am not it, it makes me sound like such a grandma too um, <laughs> I am not a like I would love to see the sunrise I'm gonna go back to bed or I, I'm gonna go see the sunset and I'm just gonna sit there and watch it but I'm not gonna like you know what I mean like it is not a huge event for travel wise for me anymore to be like I gotta yeah. go this and this I'm gonna enjoy it all exactly yeah I, it just doesn't have to be like I don't want to be in a situation where I feel like I have to take photos like every single every single time there's good light like <laughs> yeah my that's, sister that's why... my sister has started saying to me she's I'm like uh, take a picture of the sunset she's like the camera can't capture it Danielle just sit here and enjoy it <laughs> I'm like, wow. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for the wake up. Yeah, <laughs> totally. What, um, what is, what was the thing that bit you that started? Like, I love hiking. I love, what is your out? Like, how did you become so obsessed with being in the outdoors? Ooh, I don't know if I've really thought about that. Um, my friend introduced me to hiking when I was living with her in Michigan Okay. And we ended up planning a trip to Colorado and I went all like nerdy about it and started researching like everything on hiking yeah. boots yeah. and bought my first pair from REI. And then <laughs> we like went and did this really challenging mountain. And after that, I was like, oh, I like this. <laughs> but <laughs> I think in Washington, when I moved there, it was just such a way to decompress and get out of the city. And it just, it became so good and so important for my mental health that that's what kept me going absolutely I love it it's like uh when you actually do get to be outdoors it's like a it, it truly is like that breath of fresh air people are so tired of being indoors especially right now so whenever we get to do it I love to run outside so anytime I get to like actually take in like that cold air right now it's like a blessing because I'm like thank god that I'm outside right now and I'm just enjoying this yes my last question for you and I ask this of everybody what inspires you oh 
what inspires me that's been something I have been trying to journal about because I feel like in this last couple of years I've kind of lost some of that but I mean I think I'm just trying to get back to photos that have a feeling like and I think that's why I gravitate to film so much right now because you just you're consuming so much visual you know creativity and arts on social media that um when I find someone like my friend um wild Gina on Instagram I'm obsessed with her work it's it's just like she captures feeling in her in her work and that's something that is so inspiring I love that I've always been somebody who is so I cannot do film photography just because I don't have the skills to do it but I've always been so appreciative of the beauty that comes out of film photography um, because it, it's very different from how we view digital today. It just, it, it's like slapping a filter on something, but in it's such a, like a different way. It's a different yeah. kind of photography beauty. And it's so intentional. Um, I have to like think about you know, how many shots I'm taking. I can't just like rapid fire shots of a sunset. So yeah, it brings me back. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's the, put the camera down and en- actually enjoy it because you're only going to get one shot of this. Exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> I love that. And Melissa, I thank you so much for coming on and talking with us today. Um, Melissa's socials will be linked down below. So you guys can go follow Miss Rover herself um and stay in tune with all of the incredible travels that she is doing I just saw the one where you were in the bathtub and you were looking (laughs) out and I was like okay I need to go I need to go and be where Melissa just was because this looks incredible um (laughs) treehouse obsession (laughs) I'm dying I think that's gonna be like my fall thing if anybody needs to find me this fall I'll be in a treehouse and just (laughs) across the country But I appreciate you so much, Melissa, for coming on. And as always, I will see you guys back here next time. Bye, y'all.